Hey folks, Dave the Not So Evil Evil Viking 13 here once again in Empire Total War with my American Republic historical roleplay series. Now, as the AI makes their moves here across turns, I want to talk to you guys just briefly about a new supporting system that I have on my channel. You might have seen a video about this about a month ago, but I want to remind you guys once again because it is time for the first series of rewards. The website is called Patreon, and it is a completely optional way that you guys can help support the costs of running this channel. Those costs include mainly things like paying for music licenses, my upgraded internet connection that I had to upgrade in order to be able to upload videos for you guys, and of course the large amount of time that I spend uh, recording, editing, rendering, and uploading these kind of videos. You guys can see the link to Patreon right there on the screen. You can back the channel monthly with a subscription price of anywhere from a dollar to twenty or even fifty dollars, whatever you guys want to. But the cool part about Patreon is I get to give back to you guys as you support me. On the Patreon page you'll find rewards based on your level of donation. Just a fun way that I can give back to you guys. Now as we begin our turn here in the winter of 1828, I'm going to explain to you guys why I'm talking about that Patreon page. First up, we have a technological advance. We finally have the steam engine. Very, very cool. I do love the history that comes with these technological advancements too. We have a new rake agent available to us. I might use him to try and take out these Mexican gentlemen trying to steal our technology. Your orders. Anyway, going back to Patreon just briefly, it is actually rewards time. Patreon backer Ultra Grunt is actually at a reward level on Patreon where he gets to name one of my battleships here in the American Republic. Once again, you guys can go to the Patreon page and see those rewards for yourself if you're interested in supporting the channel and getting some cool stuff back. Now, I love the name he picked out for his ship. Ultra Grunt is from Great Britain. And the name he has picked definitely fits. I'm looking for a ship here Hi, that needs a better name. Here we go. The New Dawn. Not a terrible name, but not that great either. Ultra Grunt, being from the UK, has picked the perfect name for an American Total War Let's Play. Let me present to you guys the USS Govna. How awesome is that? <laughs> Thank you Ultra Grunt for your support and for your creativity. That is just awesome. The USS Govna. <laughs> oh man. I can't wait to go into battle with that one. That's awesome. Yes, tons of economic construction going on back home. I think with almost $50,000 of income, I'm definitely going to put some money into more growth like that for this turn. Lots of recruitment, both in North America and in Europe over in the Confederation of New England, we have a much larger uh, defensive army to help watch the Northeast. Let's upgrade that state capital, recruit some militia, some additional cannon for Boston, yes, sir. and we'll make sure that General Townsend makes it back to Philadelphia to garrison. And one of our gentlemen has a industrial perk for researching technology. Speaking of gentlemen, Ready, let's buddy. try and assassinate a few of these Mexican gentlemen. Contract. 
we got caught in the progress of the attack. But we got away. That is going to make other nations suspicious of us. I feel like Great Britain still has far too many troops to my north, so I'm going to work on building up an additional army up here in the north. I'll just go ahead and queue those guys up. Before I spend too much money, let's check in on our armies over here in Europe. Oh man, that is like all of Austria's power right there. So many armies. Ready and waiting order. Honestly guys, yes, this is just ridiculous. I have never seen an AI nation with such an incredible amount of armies. How did Austria grow so unchecked? I mean, territory-wise, they're not doing that great. They're just so rich, I guess. Are they at war with the Ottoman Empire? No? Just us, France, and Great Britain. They own some weird territories down here. Huh. Ready for order. I think all of our armies are healing, but because of just the stupid amount of troops surrounding us, At the ready. I'm going to continue to recruit armies, just non-stop. Look at that mustache on General Bristow right there, that's fantastic. Forward! March! What do we got coming here? Um, this army Ready needs a little more cannon and some horse. We'll do a six pounder horse artillery. Line infantry. Regiment of horse. We'll do three of them and then some dragoons, light dragoons. That's going to fill up our queue Sorry. for this turn. It's a bunch of money that we're spending. Good grief. Ready and awaiting order. I may even try to recruit more armies here in America to send over. I'm just going to spend money as I see it. Commercial port in Maine. Industrial iron mining complex. Steam engine factory. We're going to turn Maine into our industrial powerhouse. Oh yes, let's build our steam dry dock in Yorktown, Virginia. That seems very appropriate for Norfolk. Fleet ready. Norfolk has for a long time been the seat of American naval power, at least in the Atlantic. Where else could we build some factories and some mines? New York. New York is very happy, so we'll take the, I think it's negative two happiness hit for an industrial mining complex. Can't forget our border war with Mexico. I'm gonna use my preacher here to scout their armies. They have some elite infantry, but also a lot of natives. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're going to engage Mexico for Ready? sure. Forward. March. Waiting for your order. At the ready. And Spain still has that army kind of hanging out back here. El Paso. We'll get you a water-powered cloth mill. And you could also use some regular troops to help protect you. Whew, I can really burn through some serious money with all those industrial upgrades. We're now down to 11,000 gold. 
know, I wonder if we could strike out and take Brussels. Brussels, Flanders, from the Austrian Empire. Uh, there's no military buildings, though. I was thinking that I could use it to recruit more armies faster. But it's just a region capital. No military barracks. I can only recruit, I think, like militia and base level units from there. Your humble I may go after this Austrian army here in the back, though. Seeing they are surrounded. Yeah, before I spend any more money, let's go ahead and do some battles here. I guess Mexico is going to be first up. I want to do what you guys suggested in the chat, or in the comments, for the last episode. Instead of going right for their capital, I'm going to try and humiliate them in battle and convince them to surrender. Ready and waiting on. A little bit of battling and maybe burning down their port so could get them to accept peace. Oh yeah, both armies are within range. General Cornwallis and General... Uh, not sure. <laughs> Let's take these guys out quickly. We have this huge, awkward hill right in the center of the battlefield. That's going to make it rough on our artillery. Ugh. I guess what I'll do is just try and get my artillery over the hill here. So, no fancy deployments because we're going to be marching immediately to just get over that hill. I want to get there first. What a giant mass of troops. There's more cannon. and the general in the back. Gonna make sure I have these guys pre-selected. There we are. Gentlemen, take the hill. Twelve pounder cannons move up here. And horse artillery here. Where's my second 12 pounder? There we are. And just double check. Howitzers here and here. Cavalry on the left. I think those are dragoons. And cavalry on the right. Let's just keep our general back here behind the hill. Because they do have some artillery, it looks like. Ooh, 24 pounder artillery. Here comes their general. Not really sure what they're doing there. Tell you what, men. Run into place. Hey, they actually fortified this wall, too. Elite foot guards. Oh, man. And here come the masses of American troops over the hill. First shots fired. No real damage yet. Let's 
Let's actually put our line infantry on the side here. We'll get the militia in the center. Horse artillery, get up there quickly. They're shifting left, it looks like. I'm just going to take my time while my artillery slowly comes up this hill. These lines are a bit thick, but hopefully their cannons won't have too much time to fire. They're still kind of moving them around a whole bunch. I'll have my horse artillery engage their artillery immediately. It's a very dull kind of day out here. Kind of hazy and gray. Here comes the first cavalry, charging against some very thick lines here. They're holding the charge though. Focus on their artillery, let's bleed them out with range. My militia is taking losses, but the left flank is looking like it'll be secure pretty quickly. And their artillery is getting hit very hard. <laughs> their cavalry was right next to it. That's unfortunate timing right there. Switch to canister shots. Square formation. There we go, they broke off just in time. No more square formation and reform lines. Yep, with my artillery in place, they're going to try and charge. Canister shot. For our left cannons. Fire away. There's some cannon hits on their general. Very nice. We have wrecked a bunch of their cannons right there. I see like seven of them destroyed.
Let's keep our dragoons out of range of their archers, their native bowmen on the left flank. Pushing with Colonial Dragoons again. Should have kept that left flank on square formation. I'll have my Dragoons hit these archers on the side while they're in a bit of a panic here. charge. That should take care of them. Alright, men in the middle here. Let's push up. On the flank, push up. Dragoons, push up. I'm going to move this cannon, and I just realized that I never actually deployed my howitzers, which had quick lime shot. Whoops. Let's hit those foot guards with our dragoons from their flank. Hold fire. Bayonet charge. First Pennsylvania rifles move up. You guys hold fire as well. Bayonet charge. Let's push up on these battered guards right here as well. Our militia is doing pretty well. Our cavalry is injured though, trying to get their general. Let's have this line of infantry assist with bayonets. They're actually all breaking over here. Swarm the general, swarm them. What a melee. Now they're falling quickly. Hello, Quicklime. Run down the foot guards. And they are now losing for sure. I'm going to fast forward and run them down. Alright. We deployed almost 6,000 troops versus their 1,700. They actually killed 400 of us. Not too bad. Um, we did kill 1,200 of their forces, though. Line infantry at 102. 77, 147, Provincial Cavalry, 225, nice. Dragoons, 108. How did our cannons do? 3-pounder horse artillery, 37, 12-pounder at 20, not bad. Ah, 12-pounder foot at 64, that must have been that canister shot. 
Can we still Forward. hit March. their dock? Yes, we can. For war. So we have now taken the port here at Tempico. Let's replenish the army at a cost of 1800. I wonder if Mexico is ready for peace yet. Request peace. Request trade agreement. And we'll make them a protectorate. As you guys also suggested. Alright, they didn't go for that. Let's try that again. But we'll also add 9,500 gold. Alright, let's just request peace then. Okay. They accept peace. That will do for now. We also got our trade back, boosting our income even further. We're now getting 2300 in trade from Mexico. Some random goods, some sugar, a little bit of coffee, some cotton, and some pelts. Alright, well, that was some good damage to their army there. I might send one of these armies to Europe. With this other new army being built in New Mexico, I think Texas is pretty secure. At the ready, your humble servant. Yes, sir. Tell you what. Let's recruit. Yes. I guess we can't recruit a lot of good stuff here in Texas quite yet. That barracks is almost finished. Make ready. I wanted more line infantry, but... We could just do a cannon. And I'll bring a navy back to transport them. We'll break off with... A third rate, a second rate, a heavy first rate, a rocket ship, and a steamship. Any orders? And understood. Let's actually pick a few more. Ship shape and Bristol fashion, Captain. Let's send the Constitution. Aye, aye, sir. Ready for action. And the Hornet. Which is actually one of our flagships. We'll send this navy back to North America to pick up that army. And I'll try and land them. Um, maybe even in this Austrian territory. And we'll push hard on them. What is this army doing right here? Oh, actually all of those armies are within range here. So what's happening right here is, these Austrian armies defending this territory are within range to reinforce this small unit of cannon and light infantry, uh, Jaegars. So these are the only two armies that the Austrians can actually deploy. The rest have to march in to reinforce. That gives me a deployment advantage I might be able to hurt them very badly right here. I'm gonna go for it. We have a howling snowstorm here. And our enemies should be pretty weak, at least initially. But we have to set up our deployment in kind of a U-shape to prepare for their reinforcements. Now, I'm not sure exactly where they're going to be coming from. So I want to kind of cover all of the angles here. They shouldn't be coming from behind me, but they'll be somewhere out in their deployment zone. We'll put our 
howitzers behind the fence here. With quick lime. How is that reach? That's pretty good. Let's put our two regiments of horse on the right. Dragoons over here on the left, kind of watching this hill. Now for our deployments. Provincial scouts. Legion of the USA. We have some nice little bits of terrain here that I want to try and use. We'll do Legion of the USA. Then how about some Marines in square formation? To watch for cavalry. Now they might get some crossfire from the puckle guns there. Let's push the puckle guns up just a bit. Do US Marines and line infantry. There we go. Then Legion of the USA. Oops, they were already deployed. We'll do one infantry right here instead. Then we'll do one infantry here with our cannon. U.S. Marines in square formation. And let's make sure that our left flank is covered as well. Should probably get... where are these guys? We got Marines. We'll get some Marines and some line infantry. Marines on the end in square formation. Long Rifleman right here. Move the square up, move the horses up. That leaves Marines. I'm going to actually pull a US Marines to be in square formation on this side as well. Any of these lines should be pretty mobile if we have to swing them. They have more deployment space on the right flank, so I'm just going to keep some of these guys more to the right. And if need be, I can bring this whole center section right here swinging in along this ridge line to look in this direction. But I feel like yeah, their deployment zone ends right there. I don't think they're going to be coming in from this side of the map. There's their cannon with fortifications. And here come their reinforcements. Kind of on the far side here, but still on the right. So we're deployed pretty well. I want to bring this line in quickly, I think. Let's just bring that on in. Pull my cavalry back so that their provincial cavalry has to run past my marines. And now charge them. And they just got enveloped. All right, 
point back to our initial target over here. I'm just going to charge in and take that cannon out quickly. Because things are about to heat up on this other front. Artillery move up to right here. Watch out for those pikes. We have killed their, oh, their general on the artillery unit right there. Let's actually pull back if possible. Get that cannon up there and deployed. Oh, Marines, get up here. What are you doing? Here we go, more cannons. They have so much cavalry right now. This is ridiculous. I'm glad those puckle guns are right here in the center. I'm also going to take this house and fortify it. Canister shot, fire if ready. Oh, they're reloading the cannons. Going for the Marines. We've gotta hit that cavalry. There we go. That was a rough hit. I feel like I'm going to fortify those lines more in the center. Let's bring one of our reserve units and have them ready from the far right flank. Why can't I move my guys in square formation? I don't get that. Fall back just a bit. Let our cannons have a piece. Whoa, serious quick lime right there. Where did that come from? Do they have a howitzer? see a howitzer. Oh, they do have howitzers. And mortars, too. Let's try and mop up that artillery quickly.
that was a lot of losses from that quick lime. Half the unit in one shell. Can our 12 pounders reach that artillery? There's that howitzer right there. Regiment of horse, get in there. Let's try and strike all these artillery units quickly. Our dragoons are not doing well back here against this elite infantry. Let's have our scouts deploy pikes just in case things go south here quickly. Puckle guns, open fire on the cavalry. Deploy stakes. I think we're getting swarmed over here. Is it too late to pull back? Oh, we got one of their horse artilleries. Cannon back here. Focus on that howitzer. Actually, you guys, break off and hit that howitzer. Ah, uh, there's a second one right here, it's the mortar. Yeah, just pull back for now. It was worth a shot. We also lost our cavalry, our dragoons, on the left flank. Line infantry assumes square formation. Thankfully, we did get those pikes deployed. some artillery. They're going to bait us with artillery though it looks like. Usually we have the artillery advantage but not this time. I think that finishes off their cavalry though. I'm going to reform lines and march on their primary lines right here, I think. Let's make sure our howitzer is still hitting them hard. It's an elite regiment of foot. Um, regiment of line infantry. Fire on the line infantry. Puckle guns get ready to redeploy. Get all these lines pushing up a bit. Let's go get that mortar battery. I'm tired of all that raining down upon us. Oh, here's our reinforcements. General's bodyguard at an awkward placement, marching right into the side of their lines. What are you doing?
Huckle guns. Move up to right here. Here we go. Now their artillery is open to attack. I do see puckle guns there in the back though. That's gonna be nasty. We'll have to use the hill's cover to get to those. We've got some Jaegars flanking around us, too. Form up lines. Ooh, regiment of horse. Let's get you flanking. They're actually playing this quite well. can't seem to deploy or undeploy my cannons. They're stuck on the pikes. So we just lost a cannon to a glitch, basically. Let's focus on the core of their units here. I want these puckle guns up nice and close. Howitzers, I think, can still hit their current lines. Yes, they can. Let's keep working on this mop up here in the back. Here's a charge from the militia. Form up men on the puckle guns. Deploy, deploy. I think our puckle guns can't see over this hill, unfortunately. So, let's push up hard on their flank. Bring our cannon and puckle guns around. Hit them from every side. I'll wait for their puckle guns to exhaust their ammo, find the nearest hill. I think we'll actually be 
I'll walk the horses. I'll take him around this nearest hill on their left flank. Then charge in, hopefully during a reload. There we go. March in, men. These Austrian units are definitely holding their own. Ah, the Puckle Gun's got a piece of my battered horse there. They're falling back. Their lines have been thrown into confusion. Let's take advantage of that for sure. Puckle guns deploy. Mortars keep on coming. Hopefully this hillside will give us enough cover on the right flank to get to those stupid puckle guns. I say, ask them for my own guns. We've actually taken quite a lot of casualties. Alright, it's time for the charge. They're firing now. They got one of us. Oh, second one's firing. They got two. And now they're caught in a reload, I think. There we go. A few losses right there at the end. They're still firing in desperation. Oh man. Point blank. We got like six horses there right at the end. It's all over though. Crest the hill, men. Crest the hill. Everybody push. Push, push, push. I'm gonna have my light infantry shoot these guys in the back. Austrian militia is actually forming back up. Oh, Marines caught in the center. Look out. Let's. Oops. Well, still selected too many guys. Push up with our howitzers. Come on, guys, finish those cannons off. The militia and the line infantry trying to hold that line.
Let's pack up the puckle guns once again. Close, close, close. What a battle, good grief. And their line of infantry can't figure out which way to face this point. <laughs> Now they are shattered. Perfect. That's probably gonna just do it for this battle. Not a lot of running down to do. I'll try and catch what I can with my cavalry. We deployed almost 6,000 troops and we did lose a thousand. That was a very high casualty battle. The Austrians deployed 2100 and lost most of them. We appear to have lost a lot by friendly fire. There was a lot of line shifting going on. Let's see where that puts us. And the Austrian territory is now undefended. Let's replenish this army and I think... At the ready. Can we make a sprint for their territory? Ready for orders. Only with our injured army. Um. Yes, sir. Waiting move him up just orders. a bit. There we go. Now our full strength army can move in. Sound the call to battle. Forward. I'm going to demand their surrender. Auto resolve. Victory. Only minor losses, and we have finally captured an Austrian territory in this war. Repair. Replenish. And that's going to give our income a minor boost. About 3,000 or so. I wonder if the Austrians are getting nervous yet. Let's actually move this army just over the river here. Ready and waiting order. Not bad. Well guys, we haven't spent a whole lot of time in the world map. We've had so many battles to fight in this turn. But with our last bit of coin, let's find something to upgrade, I think. Where could this money go? Oh yeah, there's that gigantic Spanish army that was waiting to land. I guess it should go to recruitment in Virginia and the Carolinas. Let's recruit line infantry. That's really what we need, definitely. And maybe some horse, some provincial horse. Just in case the Spanish get a little invady once again. Only 740 left, but plenty more coming in the next episode. Almost 60,000 income. That will do it for this episode. As always guys, thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out what's going on elsewhere on the channel, plenty of other series in the works, and I'll see you guys next time.